Good morning. Well, if you watched our Freeze and Fuse video, you might remember on that that we teased that we'd be making an aquarium lantern. Well, today's the day. It's in two parts and this is part one. Jill Tisbury here again and welcome to a wet and dreary UK day really uh, so there's nothing for it we've just got to make a tropical lantern so it's decreed um, so what I've actually done here is already cut out my pieces uh, as you can probably see um, obviously this is the door piece because a little bit shorter a little bit narrower um, and we got three other panes you'll also notice that I have just put a little, um, it's about a half a centimetre um, line around. It's just with Sharpie, it will burn off. Um, and the reason I've done that is just to remind me not to go beyond that um, because that's where the frame is for the lantern. Um, so I actually can't remember where I got my lantern from that we're using for this, but they're available in most good uh, homeware stores. Um, there's lots of different prices, lots of different styles. Um, and the one that we're using is really quite simple, as you saw. Um, so I thought it makes a really good aquarium because um, it kind of reminded me of an aquarium. So that's why we're doing this. OK, so. Um, I've already done a little bit of work on this um, because you don't really want to watch me do this. This is just um, French vanilla. So we've used French vanilla fine frit to make the sand. So if you look down here, you can see um, we've put the sand in place. French vanilla, quite straightforward. It makes a really good coral sand. Um, and then I've used um, quite a few beads um, on the bottom just to kind of give the idea that there's, um, I don't know, shells, uh, maybe pebbles that have um, sort of gone around in the surf and rounded off. Um, but I've used kind of pastel colours. So um, this is my bead box, as you've seen many times before, if you've watched some of our other videos. And I take the transparent layer off and underneath we've got opals. So I have gone for things like this, which is a um, marzipan. So that's a opal marzipan uh, bead. These have just been full fused. Um, whenever I've got a kiln or uh, something where I need to full fuse something, I always put bung a load of spare bits in, um, just shards of glass and uh, get myself a whole load of beads and um, so we've used this which I think is uh, something like uh, citronella green um, and I think we have used some French vanilla beads actually uh, like the ones that are in here you can use what you like um, but you can see what's happened along the bottom of here it's kind of created this little bit of interest in here so French vanilla fine frit few opal beads and then lastly um, I put down some driftwood um, grey just, uh, just sprinkled it down there before I added my shells so the shells um, if you haven't already seen it um, it's a really good idea to perhaps have a look at our freeze and fuse video um, that explains how to do this so um, we've got fish and we've got shells these are just uh, your normal silicone moulds. Um, you can get them from um, sugar suppliers, so sugar craft suppliers, or um, any good sort of hobby place usually has things like this. Um, and that's allowed us to create things like this. This is lovely. Look at that. So I think that had some um, sienna powder in it and some olive green to give you this sort of mossy type look on it. Um, and I can't remember what else I put in there, perhaps a little bit of black. Um, just experiment and see what colours you get. So you can get some really lovely, um, like this one here. So this one, um, you see these all over the place, these little green snail shells. Um, and that came out of uh, the mould I just showed you as well. 
Um, so I've taken my shells, there's some really tiny ones here, little purple ones, that was the violet that we used, um, and I've just sort of added them in and around that French vanilla, those beads, and created myself a little coral beach. Um, and then decided on the story that's actually going to go um, around my lantern. So this is panel number one. And again, these are freeze and fuse. They came out of this mould, which is quite a nice mould. I'm not sure what they are, but to me they look like discus. So I thought I would use garnet red and turquoise in there. I put a little bead in for the eye. And that's what we got. So this is going to be the first panel that we do. The door panel has a couple of seahorses on it, um, which is another mould that I had. Um, but I wanted to use this because if you look at this, this poor seahorse been in the wars. Even his nose is broken. Look, it's not good, is it? But you can still use it. Don't throw them away. So I'm going to show you how to put that back together. Um, and of course, seahorses are normally wrapped around some uh, weeds, so that's what we're going to do on here. We're going to create a little bit of a uh, sort of coral reef um, around here with the little Nemo's in it. So um, that's going to probably be bare of weeds, but we will use some confetti and create some coral. And then for this one, we've got a whole different technique um, using some copper inclusions. So I'm just going to move these out of the way and we can have a look at a panel at a time and just finish off this lovely lantern. OK, so we've cleared the decks um, and we're ready to work on the first panel. So I am just going to really quickly pop some glue on the back of my fish and just get them into place. So I want them kind of in a, a plume of water uh, near some weeds, I think. So just a tiny little dob on the back just to save them jumping around in the kiln. And they can go on there, so that's fine. And then I've got some, um, some of the corals that were uh, from Freeze and Fuse, which are notoriously um, fragile. So this bit's fine, because this bit's actually um, gone okay. So I'm going to leave him down there. But this bit, uh, uh, as you can see, very fragile. So um, I'm just going to put a dob of glue down here so that we can put the coral, the base of the coral, uh, the grass in place. And then I'm just going to dip that into here. Just try and make sure that doesn't move when we fuse that together. So your tweezers are really useful at this point. Just dip the end in there, pop that on here. They stay together okay um, in terms of the... Oh, I don't think that goes there. I think that goes there. In terms of the fronds, but um, just broke off from the base. So we're going to pop that... Oops, upside down. Pop that in place. There we go, and a bit of glue there. Nice. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, need some weeds for these um, fish to play in. So I've got some of our um, stringers that we pull, um, some of the really fine stuff here. I'm just going to break off. And I'm just going to put some glue. Let me move this over here a minute, a little bit of glue down here so I can dip this in the bottom of it, pop this in place. So I think we've got some quite, um, quite wispy weeds growing around here that these fish are playing in. So the weeds need to go um, up and around over the fish. The, the fish are really swimming in and out of these weeds. So I want some quite long ones um, if I can. Oh, it's like knitting, isn't it, when you've got this stuff? Oh, look at that. That's a lovely one. I think I'll break that just there. A bit too long, though. And again, you want them not all necessarily going the same way. So let's just have a little bit of glue on the end of there. It's coming out from these bits here. We like that. And maybe just one up the middle. 
So I'll take that bit off there. Oop. Just pop that in. Under that one and onto there. Lovely. Love it. It's very simple, very straightforward. Um, so the other stuff I've got are these, which actually are our opal, uh, oval tropical leaves. I'm just going to get a few of those out. And these work really nicely. We use them on a lot of the jellyfish pieces that we do. But um, quite often you see these weeds that have these little oval leaves, quite sparsely um, sort of spaced up the stem. But they're nice. Adds a bit of interest, a little bit of colour, and it kind of connects it all together. So it's only a few of them. As I say, they're quite sparse. But once we've done this, those are our weeds in place. And we can add a bit of sea. So some of these are transparent, some of these are opal. Really quite nice. Let's just have a few over here. Some little ones at the top, I think. Oh, there we go. Glue stick into my tweezers. There's a good one. Let's have that one. A couple more and then we're done, I think. With the leaves. This one perhaps needs a little bit more. Maybe he's a bit stronger, so you've got some thicker ones at the bottom. <laughs> See, I've told you before, I make up all these stories about these things. Oh, look at that, that's a good one. So that's a bit better. Let's have that down there. Cool. So we like that. Let me put those away so we don't get them in anything else. Okay, so last thing I'm going to do there, um, I've got some clear beads that I pulled out of my bead box. I'm going to use these like uh, bubbles. Actually, it's probably a lot easier, isn't it, to put some glue here. So it's like a plume of bubbles that I want um, every now and again, perhaps going up from these. So there are some bluish ones in here. There are lots of different sizes. So I'm actually going to try, if I pop them on here, you can see them a bit better. There we go. So you can see all the different sizes that we're using. I'm just going to space them apart a little bit. So this will look quite cool when it's finished. I think I'm only going to use the clear ones on here because I want to add some uh, aqua, aqua. I think it's light aqua that I've got. I'll check it in a minute and we'll show you. Um, but it's a lovely sort of blue frit that we're going to pop on here to give the impression of, uh, of water. So I haven't done a blue background, um, as you can see. I want this nice and clear, like they're in the middle of water. But now and again, I just want um, the impression that it's uh, it's blue tropical water. There we go. I think there's one more little bit that we'll do here. Oh no, one more bit. It's typical. I could keep going. So you have to know when you're finished on things like this. <laughs> Fabulous. OK, we like that. like that a lot. I'm going to leave those there because um, I'm going to use them a little bit later on. So there's two options here. Oh, there we go. Light turquoise and aqua blue tint. OK, so those are the two bits. Um, I'll use both to show you um, what you can do. Um, and what I like to do is do this across the pieces. 
Um, so I'm just getting a little bit, as you can see, on the end of my um, shovel here. And I'm just going to, I'm holding it with this finger and tapping with this one because I just want some plumes of blue going up here. This is going to be extremely subtle. Let's move that out of the way so you can see this. So not very much. You've put too much on the shovel, it's just going to come off in a clump. And you don't want clumps of it, you just want nice little... There we go, little plumes of, I should have been wearing a mask as well, which you need to um, wear when you're using powders. And I do have my mask here, so um, I'm going to pop that on and just finish the last few bits. Okie dokie. I think we're probably done there. Just take that off. Don't forget to wear your mask. It's really naughty of me not to wear that. I think there's a little bit on there, so I'm just going to use my paintbrush to get rid of it from the fish. And then the very last thing I'm going to do is a light dusting of this which is the uh, aqua blue a bit bouncy but i don't mind it can uh, it can move about and that's it so that's one panel done so we're happy with that put that to one side and we'll start on the next one okay so i'm um, ready to do the door panel next and the door panel has uh, seahorses on it so what I've done here is glued uh, the body of the seahorses. Um, obviously, these are the ones with the broken tails um, and the broken nose. So I've glued his nose into place. And what I'm also going to do, let me just pop a bit of glue down here. I'll put a dob of glue there because we'll, we can move it. Um, I'm just going to make sure I've got a little bit of glue in the top of that as well. There we go pop this in place so he's going to look like he is wrapped around um, a piece of weed um, or something like that um, so i need to remember where the uh, pieces go for his tail so i know that bit goes onto here and this bit so this is where your tweezers are, are really useful i'm going to pop that there i'm sure that's where that goes Yes, it is. There's the next bit. And this bit here. So let's put some more um, fronds in. So we've got some really fine bits here. Let's just glue, get a little bit of glue in there. So this is all coming up here. Maybe there's a few bits that go off there. So it looks like he's really tangled himself up in weeds here. And then this one needs to perhaps have a piece here. Coming from the edge. His tail's not in such bad shape. Obviously not in the wars as much as the other one. We put that underneath. That really looks like he's tangled in that. And then we'll put another piece over the top. Let's find a nice long bit. I think we'll have that bit. Yeah, that'd be quite nice. Get my paintbrush for this. Just paint some glue down here. This this is just really to keep this anchored in place as it fires. We don't want it rolling all over the place. If we can help it. So maybe a few bits more. Some nice curly bits. Fab. Okay. Um, now the other things that I've got here, these are actually eucalyptus leaves. Um, 
so I had a mould for eucalyptus leaves. But um, they look really nice on here, like some sort of undersea lettuce, or weed or something like that. And they actually go on there quite nicely. It just adds a bit more interest. Let's give this a squeeze. It's a nice foil um, for the blue seahorses, so this looks quite nice. Let's pop this down here. So we like that. I think we'll have one more piece there. Actually, I'm going to move that piece down to here and put the smaller piece on the top. So that one's there. And then this smaller piece. Make sure you get it the right way around because it's got some beautiful markings on the one side and flat on the other. Marvellous. So again, we like that. Um, I'm going to put a couple of bits of coral. Now this one really did. This dried out quite a lot. So when I do my freeze and fuse, what I like to do um, is freeze it for probably about no more than two hours and this piece as you can probably see here um, this piece was actually uh, then left to dry out for a few days um, so once it's frozen i'll take it out i'll let it dry out so that some of the water actually comes out of it um, but generally i won't leave it for more than sort of overnight and I left this for a few days and this was the result um, it was just powder and so the powder kind of went uh, dispersed everywhere so you can see all of these bits went away from each other and that's what I find happens uh, with my freeze and fuse if I just let it dry out overnight it's absolutely perfect not a problem so I think that looks quite cool I'm, I'm going to leave that piece over there so I'm not going to use that and now I'm going to go back in again like we did before. So I'm going to use my mask. So these are just plumes of turquoise just to match the other ones. It's just giving a bit of continuity. And if you do go over some of the bits, don't worry. Oh, get another brush. There we go. More beads. So we get our little plumes of bubbles back. And again, this just adds to the continuity that we had on the other um, panes. And then that's this one done. Glue's taken a dive. There we go. Perhaps not so many on here. Again, the glue's just helping these to stay in place because things can jump in your kiln. You don't want that. Let's put a nice big one there. Look. Perfect. Oop. Lovely. Just a few more. You can tell when I'm in the zone because I've gone all quiet. <laughs> Lovely. I think we like that last couple of bits and that's another panel done so it didn't really take very long um, to do these once you've actually thought about what your story is as you go along so I like that that's our seahorses that's the door panel done so he can join the what do we say they were discus weren't they so he can join the discus and um, we will do our little coral reef that's the next bit